Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. For today's tutorial, I have my good friend Veronica on back with us to be today's model. On her, I created this look that consists of a beautiful, beautiful complexion, and I paired it with some dramatic retro eyes. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm taking the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask and using this to prep the lips with. I just apply a small amount on, leave it there while I apply on the skincare and makeup, and by the time I apply on the lip products at the end of the application, the lips will be smooth and hydrated. Next, I'm going to move on to applying the Catrice True Skin Foundation in the shade 20 Warm Beige. I'm using two pumps on the back of my hand, which will be the perfect amount for the coverage I'm looking to achieve today. I don't want her skin to feel weighed down by product. I want it to be able to breathe through the makeup we put on top, allow for that skincare to shine through, and allow for the eye makeup to have its own moment. Because this look is you know, really all about the eye makeup today, I want the skin to complement it, not compete. So little by little, I'm applying this on with a makeup sponge and we get to see how pretty this foundation is. It's in my top five favorite foundations right now. It's lightweight, it's buildable, and it's affordable. I think it's only like $11. And to pair with this, I'm using the new Catrice True Skin Concealer in the shade Warm Vanilla and using this to conceal and brighten the under eye, center of the forehead, down the bridge of the nose, Cupid's bow, and chin. Now, of course, you know, you usually wouldn't see me use the actual concealer applicator to apply onto the model. For sanitary reasons, I usually apply it on with a brush, but in this case, she really liked how the foundation looked on her, so I gave her the foundation and figured I'd, you know, give her the concealer too, which is why I'm using the applicator. And then I'll come back in a second to blend this all out. But first, I'm using the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Shaping Stick in the shade Medium, and using this to add back a bit of dimension to the face. This is gonna be a very, very soft contour today. I'm applying this on with a blush brush to the areas I want to add some depth to. So the perimeter of the forehead, the hollows of her cheeks, jawline, and nose. By applying this on with a fluffier brush rather than straight from the, you know, straight from the stick, it gives us a softer application of the product. It also gives us more control. We can build up the product in the areas we want, but I'm going to take it easy today. The last time I did Veronica's makeup on my channel, we did this very full coverage look that turned out beautiful, but <laughs> it was full coverage. You know, I, I like going heavier with makeup for things that involve being on camera or being photographed because it just reads differently. Like this, for example, it's going to end up being a medium coverage finish by the time I'm done. And when I went through the close up shots of the final look, which I'll include at the end, of course, it just doesn't have that airbrushed skin effect that full coverage gives. You know what I mean? Like when you see full glam on camera or in red carpet photos, it doesn't look as heavy as it usually does in person. That's just the name of the game and how studio lighting and flash photography works. So, you know, I say that to say, keep this in mind when you see me applying products because I usually have to add a little more given that it's, you know, it's for on camera. I always say that light coverage on camera looks medium coverage in person and medium coverage on camera looks full coverage in person. And if it looks full coverage on camera, then it looks like drag makeup in person. So <laughs> on that note, I'm going to finish blending out this concealer and I'll be right back. All right, so now that I'm finishing up on this blend, I'm heading over to the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder and using a light amount of this to set that concealer around the eyes into place. And I'm also running this along the upper lid and through the brows to mattify these areas before applying on eyeshadows and brow products.
For the rest of the face, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade Medium 2, and I'm applying this on with a fluffy brush. This is a great powder to use to set the face or just to keep in your purse to touch up your makeup throughout the day with because it's not super pigmented in color. It's light to medium in coverage, but leaves such a natural finish to the skin that doesn't feel heavy or cakey. To blush up the cheeks, I'm using the House Labs Casa Gaga Tutti Gel Powder Blush and dusting this onto the apples of her cheeks. I've been obsessing over these new blushes lately, but I think this apricot coral shade is my favorite. And then heading back to the setting powder, I'm laying down a good amount of this to underneath the eyes, and I'm applying this here to catch any fallout that we may have from the black eyeshadow we use later on. Next up, for brows, I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Pencil in the shade or Taupe. I know this pencil looks like it's, you know, it's been through it. It's missing the spoolie on the other end of it and everything. It's a mess. I need to get another one, but <laughs> anyways, I'm using this to fill in and shape her brows. I'm really not using a lot of this or doing anything too crazy to her brows. She has a beautiful brow shape to begin with, so this step is pretty quick and easy today. To begin on the eyes, I'm mixing the two deeper shades in this e.l.f. powder contour palette and applying this across the upper lid and to slightly smoke out the lower lash line. You can go ahead and use whichever brown eyeshadow or bronzer that you want to use for this. I just happened to have this palette laying out and I thought I'd make for the perfect shade. It's not too dark, but yet it still shows up and adds a soft smoky depth to the eyes, which is the perfect start to the eye look I'm going for today. Once I have this blended, I'm using this Inglot Black AMC Gel Liner and using this to line the upper lash line. I'm starting from the inner corner and then making my way across the lid. What I like to do here while I'm at this step is take a second to tight line with that liner so that we get that lash line super dark and there's no gap that can be seen when she's looking straight ahead. Once I've done this, I'm going to continue on with that liner, beginning to wing it out. <laughs> this is my least favorite thing to do in the world. It's so nerve wracking for me. I'm not talking at this moment. I don't even think I'm breathing. I'm just saying prayers and that, oh, 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 oh no, that is not cute. So I'm going to extend it a little bit and, and give it some more drama, but still it, it didn't really help. So I'm going to move on and come back to this because my anxiety can't deal with this right now. So I'm taking that gel liner and creating that second wing underneath. This part is much easier for me. I basically line the outer third of the lower lash line and just extend it right out. I'm going for a really bold retro kind of look. So I felt like a double wing liner would be the best direction for me to take. And then with a small blending brush, I'm diffusing out that gel liner to get a soft diffused finish. There's no eyeshadow on here. I'll apply some black eyeshadow after this with an angled liner brush. Right now, I'm just diffusing out that gel liner. Honestly, this eye look is, it, it's a lot of back and forth to build up the shape that I want. So I'm going to stop rambling for the next few moments so you can see how I really build up this look. All right, so it's coming together, right? Little by little. Here, I'm just extending the inner corner of her eye before grabbing the one size liquid eyeliner pen to deepen those blacks. As much as I love a gel black liner and black eyeshadow, nothing gets it quite as dark as a pen, for me at least. So this is a step I take after I've applied the dark shadows to get a lot more contrast and depth. Next up, with this Makeup Forever Nude Eye Pencil, I'm running this through the waterline. And you'll even notice me dragging this a little further down past the lash line as I get closer to the inner corner. And then for that space between the two wings, I'm using a cream colored eyeshadow and just laying this down right in between. 
For mascara, I'm using the Lilash Lash Synergy Mascara and applying this to both the top and bottom lashes. So the brand that makes this mascara is the brand that makes the lash serum I use. I've talked about it a lot on my channel because I'm always asked about my lashes. Spencer, <laughs> how do you get your lashes so long? Well, it's because of their lash serum. I've used it for almost almost three years now. I apply it on once a day, usually at night before bed, and it, it's truly the best. And I've used a lot of lash serums before, but nothing has worked as well and as fast as this one. So if you're looking for a lash serum, look no further. Lilash Lash is the best. Try it out, thank me later, it's amazing. Okay, for lashes, I'm using the style from Raquel Lashes called Full Moon. What I like to do with these, especially since it's a flared style, so it's longer towards the ends, is I like to lift the corners upwards as they dry. And I'm styling her hair in this big, messy beehive situation, so I won't worry too much about her hair falling in front of her face and pulling down on the lashes, but I still wanna make sure we keep them lifted so we can see the detail of the double winged liner. Next, I'm using this Makeup Forever Pro Light Fusion Highlighter and dusting this onto the high points of her face with a fan brush. So that includes the cheekbones, a bit on the forehead and chin, down the center of the nose, and Cupid's bone. Next up, I'm taking the Buxom Lip Liner in the shade Hi Def Honey and using this to line her lips with. I know, I know, I know. I've used this in like half of my tutorials lately, but it's just, it's so good. And you know how it is when you get hooked on a nude lip liner. It just becomes so hard to venture out and try anything different. But on the bright side, we have only one more product to use, which is this Morphe Make It Big Gloss in the shade Extra Exposed and using this to add a high shine finish to the lips, making this the final step in how I created this glam makeup look on our naturally beautiful model. And there we have it kids. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.